The very first direct to sell SpaceX Starlink constellation is complete. What does that mean for you and me? It's a good question. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Dark Temptation again. So good, so, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX and Elon Musk. There was a new report out from Elon Musk on X. He posted something that was very, very interesting. Basically saying that the constellation for the DTC or direct to sell is complete, or let's just say the very first shell of the constellation is complete, but it is now 100% functional. So this is really, really good news. We've been talking about this a lot as of late because there's a lot of people that are interested in this topic because having the ability to just pick up your phone, it doesn't have to be modified in any way. It doesn't matter which phone you're using. It could be a Google phone, an Android phone. It could be an iPhone. It doesn't make a difference. You pick up your phone, as long as you have T-Mobile here in the US, you're going to be able to text message your loved ones, family, anyone, all right, and be able to do it even when there's no connectivity at all. That means you could be on the top of a mountain somewhere, no cell towers nearby, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no nothing. And you'll still be able to use this phone like a sat phone of old. So it's really, really incredible. I can't even imagine how many lives are going to be saved with this service. I personally have tried this DTC service in the past when Hurricane Milton came through the area down here in South Florida and it worked. No service at all, everything turned off, yet we still were able to text via the satellites overhead, which is just, Unbelievable, considering we're inside of an office here, inside of a structure, a studio, with eight plus inch poured concrete walls. That means the signal had to be coming through the ceiling. Amazing, absolutely amazing how it's even possible. So the beginnings of this is now complete. That means that they can go live with it. Anyone that has T-Mobile, T-Mobile should activate this momentarily. I know a lot of you have been asking me, when am I gonna be able to use it? When am I gonna be able to use it? And it looks like it's coming now. They said it was gonna happen before the end of the year, and now that we see Elon Musk making this statement, it looks like it will happen. They are actually on schedule, not on Elon Musk's schedule. Like sometimes he'll say things are going to happen years prior to when they actually do happen. Anyways, that being said, I was reading a few articles and one of them stuck out to me. I wanna read this to you so that you know exactly what's going on and how it can possibly pertain to you and your life and your security, your safety. So before we get into this article, I wanna say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, that's very helpful. Don't forget to share the content. Once again, sharing is caring. Share the content with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever, right? Share, share, share. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on the channel, little thank you button, click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, they're free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you want more SpaceX Starlink goodness, helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, how to do things. And of course, the why behind all of it is this channel is always about the why. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, come back and click that link. That'll take you over to my playlist of like 370, 380 videos I've put together just for you over the last 40 months. So take a look at those. Anyways, let's jump right into this article and then I'll give you my commentary and I wanna hear from you after that. Down below, what do you think about all of this? And if you don't wanna write anything down there, I'm okay with that. Put an emoji. This way I know that you actually watched the video that would be very helpful. It starts out by saying, Elon Musk, SpaceX has completed its first Starlink satellite constellation aimed at direct to cell phone connectivity, making the service fully operational. 
Now remember, I tried it, but that's when the FCC granted them approval to be able to use it during the disaster of the two hurricanes that came through recently, and it worked. And hundreds and hundreds of thousands of text messages were sent through this service through satellites which is crazy. So we knew it worked then, but now it's finally done. This network, this mesh network of DTC satellites are now functioning, fully functioning and online. Making the announcement must reveal that the current bandwidth per beam is approximately 10 megabits per second with future constellations expected to enhance speeds and provide additional capability. What this means, additional capabilities, is that right now we'll only be able to text through SpaceX Starlink's DTC service, but in the future, by the end of 2025, you should be able to make a phone call and then pulling into 2026, you'll also be Able to use data, surf the web and whatnot as they increase that megabits per second per beam, which is very important. They also included a few photos of the rocket actually taking those DTC satellites into orbit. Let me just say before I finish this article that if you don't know what DTC or direct to cell service satellites are, basically they are a satellite that's slightly larger than the version two minis and they have enode B's built into them. An enode B is basically like a modem, let's call it. It is what transforms the satellite into a cell tower. So every one of these satellites are basically a cell tower in space at about 530 kilometers instead of down your street, which is pretty cool in my personal opinion. And what's amazing is your phone unmodified can communicate with those satellites, once again, sitting at 500 plus kilometers in space. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, the technology there. The article continues, this initiative is part of Starlink's broader mission to extend global internet coverage, particularly in regions where traditional connectivity poses challenges. Shedding light on SpaceX Starlink's performance, Australian consumer watchdog ACCC revealed that SpaceX's satellite constellation delivered better results than local rival NBN's Sky Muster service, while SpaceX Starlink delivered average download speeds and latency of 470 megabits per second and 29.8 milliseconds latency. That's your ping. NBN's service managed only 111 megabits megabits per second and with a ping or milliseconds of 664.9. What this means to me is that the NBN Sky Muster Service is using satellites that are in GEO instead of LEO. I've said this in the past, when you're sitting in LEO, really close, low Earth orbit, you're getting pings of about 20 milliseconds to 50, 60 milliseconds. But sitting in GEO, instead of 500 kilometers, you're sitting at like 36,000 kilometers. Well, your ping or that latency that it takes the information to bounce back and forth is a lot greater, 10 times greater. So instead of let's say 50, 60 milliseconds, you're gonna see 600, 700, sometimes a thousand milliseconds to get data from space down to earth and back. So it is a much slower system. So of course, SpaceX Starlink has the upper hand here. Why it matters. The recent operational status of SpaceX Starlink satellite constellation follows a series of strategic deployments. In late November, SpaceX secured a commercial license from the Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, for its Starlink's direct-to-sell service. This license permits SpaceX to operate its Generation 2 Starlink DTC satellites, marking a pivotal step in expanding satellite-based mobile connectivity. Earlier in October, NASA endorsed the initial deployment of 400 Starlink satellites closer to Earth. This move is part of a study to assess the impact on travel to and from the International Space Station or the ISS. NASA's support underscores the potential benefits of deploying satellites at a lower altitude. This is very important because now we're going to see these satellites, the DTC satellites, move from 530 kilometers about down to approximately 340 kilometers. This is much lower, but much closer to the ISS 
ISS or the International Space Station. So they're going to only allow for 400 of those to be deployed in this region to make sure that it doesn't hinder the astronauts getting to and from the ISS. The article finalizes with this. Additionally, Musk has indicated that the third generation of SpaceX Starlink satellites will significantly improve internet speeds, offering multi-gigabit bandwidth. These advancements are expected to be launched on SpaceX's larger Starship vehicle. They have to be, and the reason being is those satellites are much bigger. They're four times bigger than the current satellites, but they provide 10 times the bandwidth. Promising a tenfold increase in bandwidth and reduced latency. I think I just said that. <laughs> SpaceX is also reporting preparing to launch a tendered offer that values the company at $350 billion. While the company is private, investors can leverage Destiny Tech 100 Inc., which is DXYZ, as well as Kathy Wood's ARC Venture Fund, or ARKVX to participate in must led space company growth. I talked to you guys about this in the past where they're still private. What can you do? Is there any way that you can get involved? There's a lot of space companies out there and you'd have to look to see which one interests you if you wanted to invest in one of these companies. I personally do not invest in any of them, just full disclosure. So, they talked about this orbital shell and they completed this orbital shell of satellites for DTC, okay? This is what Musk is talking about. So what exactly is this orbital shell? Basically, it is a, let's say a group, right? A constellation of satellites that communicate together through lasers, right? That form this mesh network that are at a specific location or an inclination. I believe these are at about 53 degrees. So at 53 degrees, they will hit a good portion of south and north areas on the planet. Now, my understanding is SpaceX is going to deploy another shell, which will most likely hit the North and the South Pole, maybe 70 to 90, 93 degrees, somewhere right around there, so that it covers the entire planet. So there is multiple shells going on here, right? So right now we're sitting mid-riff, let's say. We're sitting at about 53 degrees, so it takes care of a good portion of the planet, but it also provides really good connectivity, good speeds. So that's what they're doing as of now. Once again, there will be other shells that will be deployed. What's also interesting, like I said, is they're moving these satellites or they have authorization, let's say, to move these satellites down from 540, 530, down to 340 or so. So you're looking at about 200 kilometers closer to Earth. That's going to lower latency. Things will be faster, basically. The time that it takes data to traverse from your phone to a satellite and back, it'll be a lot quicker. Once again, 200 kilometers is much closer. Now, that being said, being closer, there are some disadvantages also. Well, your cone or that beam or that instance that they're talking about currently getting about 10 megabits per beam, right? 10 megabits of speed. Well, that beam is going to be tighter because it's gonna be closer. Like if you shine a flashlight and you're far away from something, it hits a broader area of the subject. As you get that light closer and closer and closer, it hits a more condensed or more focused point. So what that means is coming down from 540 down to 340, let's call it, 200 kilometers closer, means that that beam, once again, is going to be tighter. It's gonna be sharper. It's gonna be more condensed, meaning that that 10 megabits per second will only be able to hit a certain number, a smaller number of people. So whenever you get closer, you need to have more satellites to pick up the difference. Once again, further away, wider cone, closer, tighter cone. The other disadvantage is as the satellites get closer to Earth, they experience more atmospheric drag. This will cause the satellites to have a shorter EOL or end of life, meaning that they'll go from, let's say, five years being in operation down to maybe four or three, maybe even less, due to the fact that they are going to experience more 
atmospheric drag, and they can only hold so much propellant, so much fuel, let's say, on board to keep them from falling back into the atmosphere and burning up. So again, there is advantages and disadvantages to it. But since SpaceX Starlink can launch so many of these satellites continuously, so sometimes there's multiple, three, four, five rockets going up per week. It's just crazy from one coast to the other coast. It is nuts the amount of rockets that Elon Musk SpaceX is launching. So I don't think that they're going to care as much about the longevity of these and care more about how powerful they will be. Can we get these megabits higher? Can we get that latency lower? So on and so forth. So this is exciting. Once again, having the ability to use your phone from anywhere in the middle of nowhere where there's no cell tower, there is no Wi-Fi, there's no connectivity. When you look at the phone, it's dead. With me, I experienced two bars even being inside of this closed structure, two bars from space. That's when the FCC gave SpaceX Starlink the authority, an emergency authority, to allow for all carriers to use their DTC service during the hurricanes, and it worked. I can attest to that, and this is a AT&T phone, just for a little bit longer. We're gonna move to T-Mobile. That's for another video. But it was an AT&T phone when it was working with the SpaceX Starlink DTC service, proving that the FCC did give the ability for that DTC service to be used on all carriers, not just on T-Mobile during those times of disaster, the two hurricanes that came through. So what say you? What do you think? I think this is just awesome. And seeing that this constellation is now complete, that means that T-Mobile customers are going to get the service or they can use the service immediately as soon as they turn it on or as soon as the FCC says, yes, it's a go, you can do it. So once again, the time frame that was quoted by the end of 2024, T-Mobile would have DTC service through SpaceX Starlink. Looks like it's going to happen. So this is really, really good news. And it's not always that we see Elon Musk timeframes work out. <laughs> They're usually a lot longer than what is to be expected or as he states. So this one has gone through and this is really great news. Once again, what do you think down below? You know what I think about all of this. What do you think? Down below in the comment area, I want to hear from you. And if you do not want to put a comment down there, like I said before, just put an emoji. That's why I know you got to the end of the video. I would appreciate that. If you enjoyed it, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and my merch and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Check them out over there on jchristina.com. If there's something that you like, please pick it up and help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.